and I'm going to be wrapping up our basement project today. As you've seen in previous videos, we have done the rock with the LED lighting, the epoxy bar top, the new pendant lighting, the column. We've gone ahead and painted the entire basement. I've repurposed a, a piece of furniture that I bought uh, off of Craigslist from a gentleman and refinished it and painted it and put new felt on it so that it can match our lovely Christmas present, which is this wonderful pool table. That I did not make. I did make the light fixture up above to go with it, which was a lot of fun uh, to do that. But in completing all these projects and the flooring and the baseboard and tearing out carpet, there was one big problem. And that is what to do with the space behind the sofa. Now, my wife had found this wonderful idea on Pinterest, which I'll show you right here. And it's a creative idea with the sticks going through everything, but I think we can do better. I'm going to go ahead and attempt to do replicate that project, but to do it in three large panels with darker wood, you know, hidden screws, and possibly putting shelves on it. We may end up just keeping it as artwork, but I would like to do a fractal burn. Uh, go ahead and put some lightning through three separate pieces of wood to act as artwork behind the sofa, and I really think it's going to tie together the space. So stick with us, and what we're going to do is go up and show you the process of how we're going to do that artwork and show you the finished project that will tie this entire basement together. Picking out what kind of wood that you want to use, you got to decide what your what your look you're going for. I mean, we've got some good looking walnut and some good looking poplar over there, and we've got some big slabs of cherry wood that we could do. But I'm actually going to be doing these to do some live edge mirrors with those. Uh, I'm in the middle of doing one right now. Uh, but what we're going to be using is I've got some uh, some maple. I've got quite a bit of it uh, that's already been planed down and everything. So I think we're going to take several strips of this. And we're going to be using that to cut our various lengths. I'm going to be cutting some of these in 3 inch, some in 4 inch, and some in, I believe, 2 inch, and some in 6 or 7 inch pieces. And then cutting them to various lengths to try to get that look that we're going for. And we'll put them in there at random. Uh, so we're going to go and get those cut, and then we're going to glue them together. Now that I've got these pieces cut in various lengths and the widths that I was describing, again, we've got some here. Make sure I didn't lie to you. I got some that are five inch. I did some that are four inch. Some that are three inch. And I got one here that is a uh, seven inch. So seven, five, four, and three. You can cut them whatever length you want. It doesn't really matter. As long as you try to get them uniform. The beauty doing this is really is no rhyme or reason to this. Actually, the more obscure you can make it, really the better looking it's probably going to be. So this particular one, I don't know. Let's put the big one in the middle. And we'll do, kind of put them together, maybe like that. Uh, that's going to give us, and we'll, we'll make them look a little different. We'll pop that one up a little bit. Maybe bring that one down a little bit. So what I'm going to do, once you kind of get these lined up the way that you want it, if you want to cut a little bit off of one, now is a good time to do that. You can always do it when the project's done, but it's much easier to do it when it's separate pieces. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this and set it over on my uh, clamps. And I'm going to glue the edges and we're going to clamp this sucker together and get it to where we can uh, get it all one piece and then we'll get ready to sand it down for the burn. Once you get them all laid out here on your clamps, make sure you've got enough clamps that you can go ahead and clamp it on both sides. That way the wood doesn't bow and pop out of there on you. And then once you get it lined up again where you want it, to go ahead and take, take your wood and just turn it up on the sides like that. And we're going to run strips of glue down each one of these, and then I'm just gonna lay them down and clamp them. Once we've got all that glue dried up, we've got our sections kind of pieced together, we're gonna go ahead and loosen up those clamps. And pull all three of those sections out. So they get ready to be sanded. We're going to sand these down just because i got a little bit of imperfections, got a little bit of glue. We're going to sand those down and then we're going to get the mixture put on there so we can put some burns and some lightning through these things, some fractal burns. It's going to be super cool. I've got all the pieces sanded down and prepped and ready for the lightning, which we're going to put on there in a minute. I went ahead and made sure I positioned them where I think I'm going to want to have them on the wall. Uh, I have not done a lot of lightning 
uh, fractal burning stuff over the edges of multiple pieces of wood. I'm kind of curious to see because this stuff's got a mind of its own how it's going to track, uh, how I can make it track across versus just following the grain. Uh, maybe we can get it to do something, something cool. Let's find out. Okay, I apologize. It's kind of raining outside, so there might be a little bit of noise. But I'm going to go ahead and put the lightning on this board here. I've already done one of them. It seems to be burning very nice. This is this maple. I'm going to go ahead and coat it with this baking soda uh, water mixture. It's about one uh, heaping tablespoon to about a cup of water. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and put that on there and let it sit for about five minutes or so. And then I'm going to apply a little bit more on top of it and get ready to, ready to light it up. All right, we let that sit now for about five minutes. Now it's time to give it a little bit more and to get these in position. Now one of my probes down here on this end. Put one down here. Okay, now it's important that you get back, don't touch anything and hit the switch. Be ready to shut it off if something goes wrong. Now this is just the first burn. It's going to be hot but I've killed the power. Uh, I personally don't, don't let them touch. They're just not gonna hurt anything. I just kinda like the way that it looks when it's finished out, when they haven't touched. Like I said, I haven't done a lot of this crossing over the grains or the wood, but it seems to be finding its way where it needs to. I'm gonna go ahead and move the probes to the other corners and maybe shoot a couple pieces in there, some smaller ones, and then I'll be ready to move on to the next board. Now this, this won't look pretty until the great reveal, uh, which is when it all dries and you can sand it off and bleach the wood and then clean it up and you'll see all those little fine uh, little hairs as they've gone out there and it makes it really beautiful and unique. Now is what I like to call the great reveal, when we get to knock all the charcoal off and see the beauty that lies underneath. Typically use about 120 to 220 grit sandpaper on a random orbital sander. You can do it by hand if you want to. What you'll find is that the longer that you hold on it and the more that you press on it, you'll start seeing more of these fine hairs, but it's a fine line. You can't go too long with it or too far with it or they'll start disconnecting. You'll start losing these pretty tree branches that come out of here. Uh, you, the big areas where you start it are gonna be deeper cuts using this type of transformer. Uh, I personally like to dig them out a little bit, just kind of turning my sander a little bit to the side to kind of knock some of that out of there. Some people like to leave it uh, charcoal and just fill it. If you're going to be doing some epoxy and resin work over the top of it, obviously you can dig them all out to make it feel pretty uh, with that. But I'm going to go ahead and finish up these other two panels. Personally, I was going to try to bleach this and really make this white pop compared to this back, uh, the black, but in the end, happy wife, happy, happy life. She, she didn't like it when we held it up against the wall downstairs in the basement. She said it was too neutral compared to the beige colored walls we already had. So uh, we, we've used this on some other projects before, but this is a, uh, it's actually a floor finish, but it's a wood stain and polyurethane in one. It's a brandy wine uh, color by Minwax. It works very well on this maple. I've used it on other maple projects before. This is a satin finish because we're not a big fan of the gloss. And so nice part about using a darker color stain on something like this is if you've got some of these brown edges and things like that that you didn't really quite get sanded out right or uh, we're worried that you're going to take it down too far the darker stain really does blend a lot of that in and it, you can still see the the lightning patterns in it uh, so let me show you a little bit you can kind of layer it on pretty thick 
let it fill those cracks because it's got that polyurethane in there it'll help seal it'll help seal that in and then as I'm kind of smearing it on here you can see you can still see that pattern just fine it lightens up a little bit the more you smear it around on there it is nice to be able to just kind of pick a direction and go with a single direction with the polyurethane product like this too it helps with the brush strokes hide a little bit of those to hang these i've just got this uh that's picture hanger kit probably just got it from lowe's a long time ago it's missing a few of the pieces but just going to be using these uh, picture hangers i do not have any picture hanging wire uh, i'm going to attempt to use some of this leftover uh, galvanized electric fence wire so i'm going to be cutting a few strips of this and then we'll just be twisting up the end of this and putting a screw through it to give us a strip across the back to then hang that chain uh, over one of these so that we can get those levels so i'm going to get those cut and there you have it some lovely artwork to help bring the room together i think it turned out really great and it didn't cost that much to do because we just used some scrap pieces of wood to do it and it really fills out the room we are kind of glad we opted not to do the shelves for now. I do still have them and we may decide to put those on at a later date, but for now, I'm just kind of enjoying the artwork and the fact that the basement is now completed. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.